Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Virtual Teaching Kitchen. My name is Nicole Franklin, and I'm joined by my colleague, Madeline Wilcox, in her kitchen. Madeline and I are both registered dietitians working with American Oncology Network. And today we are excited to be making some mocktails with you um, as we think about Cancer Prevention Month. Hey, Madeline. It looks I, like you're ready to make some mocktails. I know I have my mocktail bar set up here for you guys. So I'm excited. I've got like four drinks we're going to make and it's going to be really fun and something that you can bring to your parties any time of the year or just at home because we know that alcohol is a big topic when we're talking about cancer prevention. So we're here to give you some ideas. Yeah, that that's a great one. Which which um, mocktail are we starting with? Yes, yeah, so we're going to start. I've got two shaken mocktails on the menu, and then I have two kind of really easy just pour and garnish um, uh, options as well. So we're going to start with the first of our two shaken. It's actually going to be a virgin cucumber gimlet. I'm not sure if anyone has ever had that, but it's typically just a clear spirit drink with um, cucumbers, lime juice, and then a little bit of topped with um, like soda water. But I'm going to change it just a little bit because, you know, we're making a mocktail, so we got to have some fun with that. Um, so as I'm kind of going, Nicole, um, yeah, what are some of the benefits to making more mocktails, would you say? You know, well, I do. I think it is definitely in line with the American Institute for Cancer Research's recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, and they've they come out pretty strong, really, in saying that there is no, quote, safe amount of alcohol. You know, any any amount you drink is going to, you know, increase your risk. And I think the inverse is also true, right? Anything you can reduce, it's That's also going to help you. That's a great point. So even if you can do this one extra time a week or one round out of the rounds with your friends, any step forward is going to be a good uh, direction towards more cancer prevention habits and lifestyle. Um, so I'm going to start. This is actually one of my favorite spirit, non-alcoholic spirit op uh, options. It's okay. actually called Seed Lip. I don't know if anyone has ever seen this before, but it's a great herbal tasting clear spirit. So mm -hmm. instead of using, you know, vodka or gin in a drink, you could use something like this. Like I said, this one's an herbal one. So, you know, they do make ones that aren't as potent, but I think this will be good in our gimlet. So I'm going to start with about an ounce to an ounce and a half in my shaker glass. I'm going to start with that because I'm also going to muddle up some cucumbers. And that's the fun thing about a gimlet is there's also some other anti-cancer nutrients in here. So I'm going to put probably about, oh, five cucumber slices that I've already got sliced up. I actually use the little, little English cucumbers or Persian cucumbers, so whatever you can find, because they they tend to be more delicate. And then I'm also going to do about an ounce of lime juice, so fresh limes. Like a true bartender, I have um, prepped my citrus over here. So I will actually pull my cutting board so you guys can see a little bit more. So an art. Yeah, and that's the fun when you're doing this in a social setting is you can do kind of just like what we're talking about right now, Nicole. You can socialize and make a delicious drink at the same time. So four wedges of lime is about an ounce, I'm going to say. So I'm going to take that and then I've got my trusty little muddler and I'm just going to push these in gently. So you don't have to really like puree them, but just break them up so that the juices from the cucumber are mixed with the citrus and then your NA spirit. If you didn't have lime, do you think lemon would work in this? Oh, absolutely. Any citrus, really, you could interchange oranges, grapefruit. I've actually got an orange here for another recipe, and I've got some fresh lemon juice prepped for our second one. So, yeah, any citrus is going to be A-OK. -okay. All right, so we've got these in our shaker glass. So now what we're going to do is put some ice in here. I've got a nice big bowl of ice, so it's going to be loud maybe for a little bit. Let me put that in. And then put my little topper in. My, my shaker has seen better days, but that's okay. 
that you've you've made lots of good mocktails. All right, so just about 10 seconds, that was probably good, right? And then the fun part here is you can take really any glassware. I've got a couple different ones that I'm going to show you guys, you know, throughout the session, but I've just got a rocks glass that I'm going to use. Mm -hmm. And I think the, one of the fun things is with, you know, any cocktail, but mocktails, is the ice can really be a pretty part of the drink. So I've got a nice square cube, and all you're going to do is pour this mixture you can see it's nice and green. Yeah, it is. Look at that. Yes. And then, so if you grab this to top it off, because you need a little bubble in a lot of drinks. Um, usually, again, what's going to be topped with soda water. But I've got some ginger beer here, which I think would be fun. It's non-alcoholic ginger beer. But you just do a little topper. Mm -hmm. You get a little fizz. And then the fun part is, is you can put a nice, cute little cucumber. Oh, um, that's a fun topping. Right? It in looks great. Yeah. And if, you, if you're feeling really festive, you could do maybe cucumber and a little mint. Ooh, there you go. So now <laughs> <laughs> cucumber gimlet that you can serve and feel really nice that not only are you partaking in whatever social situation, but you're also contributing to your cancer journey. So I'm going to taste it real quick. Yeah. Tell us how it is. Mm, yeah. It's got like the herbals, the freshness from the cucumber, and then a little bit of like spice from the ginger. So that's a keeper. All right. So on to the next mocktail. This one is going to be a rosemary blueberry smash. So well, we love herbs, you know, lots of great phytochemicals, also part of a very cancer um, protective lifestyle or eating pattern. So what are some ways that you like to use rosemary outside of mocktails? And I'll get my next drink ready. You know, sometimes I think about roasting them with vegetables. Um, I think about that a lot with those winter, the winter vegetables, just adding that something like rosemary. Yeah, in there. that's a good one. Yeah, and I like on the on the mocktail you just showed us how there was so much ability to kind of customize it. If you didn't like ginger or it was maybe too strong, you could do like you were saying, the club soda. Or mm -hmm. even if you weren't sure about that seed lip, maybe you could do just a little, like, do you think you could do extra club soda or could you do some tonic water? Oh, yeah. You don't even have to put any of these kind of, I'd say, like, fancy NA options in your drinks. And yeah. that's our third recipe is just looking at how do we make soda water a little bit fun. And the difference between soda and tonic water, we have to remember, is that tonic water has a lot of added sugar, which, you know, we do want to limit even in the cancer um, prevention space. But soda water is really just carbonated water. So there's nothing else, the extra that you're getting. So you can use a little bit more liberally, especially in, you know, these settings too. So... All right, so our next one, like I said, is a rosemary blueberry smash. So if you don't have fresh blueberries, which sometimes depending on the season or where you live, it just might not be something that's, you know, even relatively affordable or looks good because the blueberries have a season. So I actually just had some frozen blueberries that I froze this summer when they were in season around us. And I def uh, put them in the fridge so they kind of thawed out and uh, defrosted overnight. So I've just got some here. I'm just going to pour maybe like let's say eight or 10, maybe blueberries. I like mine with more fruit. So put them right into your shaker and you probably saw I rinsed out my shaker from last time. So you wanna start with a new, new shaker. And then you're gonna take your rosemary, just a sprig, and you're actually gonna strip it this time. So um, we can do this and not fear, you know, them getting stuck in our teeth because we've got this nice little strainer on the end of our shaker. But if you were just shaking these in a glass, you may just want to leave them intact um, or, you know, when you're when you're straining it, get it like a mesh strainer so that you're not, you know, having little rosemary buds in your in your teeth. So great tip. Yeah. Now, this one does actually call for a little simple syrup and you can make this yourself with just sugar or honey, you know, you can get really creative with simple syrups, but I took the easy way out and I grabbed just some pre-made simple syrup here. And for the sake of time, 
I'm just going to pour roughly a half an ounce to an ounce right into my shaker bottle. And again, you can customize these based on your kind of pre preference with sweetness. Technically, our gimlet, I think, should have had simple syrup in it, but I, I kind of omitted it. So again, have some fun, make it your own. Um, so now, again, we're just going to muddle this a little bit just to break down the fruit and release, release those juices. Again, blueberries are very um, thought to be cancer-fighting food, right, Nicole? Yeah, absolutely. And I love the color that it has. That's that's always fun. Anytime you're eating blueberry anything, the vibrant color. Oh, yeah. And we're going to see that really pretty in this glass. This is actually, I believe, a Bordeaux glass. It's meant for wine. But mocktails are meant to be fun. So use whatever glass you prefer drinking out of. For me, I like drinking out of wine glasses, even if it's just some soda water. So it makes it special, makes it fun, keeps you engaged in, you know, social settings. And um, yeah, just a nice, nice tip there. So I don't know if you can see in there, we've got a really beautiful, like purpley hue. So now um, we're going to take that lemon juice that you mentioned, Nicole. Mm hmm going to get about an ounce. So I actually just squeezed this before our series because um, I wanted to spend more time making and less time prepping. So you can do this before you have guests over, but do about an ounce, you know, right into the shaker there. And then like last time, we're going to fill this up with some ice. Just to the rim there. Pop your little top on. So when I think about the shaker, tell me about like what to look for in a good shaker if we don't already have one. I don't know if I heard you. It was a little loud. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I was saying, tell me about what to look for in a good shaker if we don't already have one. Yeah, well, um, I would definitely just pick a stainless steel one if you can. I got sucked into thinking this matte black because of its beauty was going to be great. But as you can see over time, it's it was actually painted. So I would say just get a solid one. That way you're not going to get any accidental like flakes or anything in there. Um, I'd actually hold it in your hands because some shakers, depending on you know where you get them, can actually be more industrial size. So as you can see, you have to have a lot of control in order to get the thing kind of mixed up the way that you want it to. So just like, you know, simplicity and then size would be my two kind of best tips for shakers. Um, I do like the ones that have the strainer here with a tight cap because then you're not messing with a, you know, a mesh strainer afterwards. It's just really simple. So that's what I would do. So now we're going to prep our glass here and get this drink ready to serve. So this is a wine glass, a Bordeaux glass. I'm just gonna put some fresh ice in it. I love the ice cube that you had early. That was so much fun. Like you said, it made a big difference to see that, that fun little cube. Yeah, and I actually, I wanted to point that out. These are little silicone molds. So you can actually just, you can wash them very easily, but you can fill these up with water, put them in your freezer and kind of have them ready for guests so that you're not worried about maybe someone's drink like this melting a little bit too quickly. And then their drink is just, you know, kind of ruined because ice is surprisingly is the biggest ingredient of a bartender's, you know, drink, how much ice, how quick it's going to melt and what it's going to do to the other flavors. Is it going to, you know, kind of melt at just the right amount of time to maintain the integrity of the drink. So Yes, yeah, so we're going to give this guy a little little shake here and pop him off. Look at that beautiful color. That is beautiful. And you can see it's very concentrated. Mm -hmm. So there's that. And now what we're going to do is instead of the ginger beer, I'm actually just going to take just some plain soda water. This is actually, I think, the Aldi version. So just something that's carbonated. And I'm actually going to fill this up equal parts, maybe right to like two thirds of the, the rim. And then this is my favorite part. So that rosemary that we included in the beginning, we're going to take a new one of them and just put that right in. So now beautiful. You a beautiful little rosemary blueberry smash. Cheers.
I wish I had a glass. I would cheers you because that that looks delicious. Yes, it is. I wish I could share these with you. I don't know what I'm going to do by myself. I'm just going to have like a little mocktail party, I think. So as you can see, even though they're shaker cocktails or mocktails, you know, they're they're very approachable. And, and that's the other thing with these is that, you know, the easier they are to make, the more com confidence you have with them, um, you know, the more likely you're probably going to drink them. So that was another intent of our, I think, video today, Nicole, right, is to show that these are, you know, approachable um, and they don't have to seem really lofty, like, you know, oh, how, how can I make a mocktail? How can I reduce my alcohol intake? You know, you can do something as simple as a shaker or we're going to do something even easier if that's just, you know, if that's where we want to start. So what I'm going to show you guys is how to take just a regular soda mocktail and elevate it. So I have two little plates here. I'm gonna put these out and I'm actually gonna take my simple syrup. I'm just gonna pour a little bit on the plate. Simple syrup, like I said, is a mixture of some type of sugar usually or honey um, with water and it's heated to make a more viscous syrup. Um, and then what I'm gonna do next, which I always enjoy and think is a good like party pleaser here, um, is I'm actually going to take a little bit of just regular sugar and put that in a little mortar, mortal and pestle, pestle. I can never say that word. Um, and then I'm going to take some dried herbs. So I've got some lemon verbena, some hibiscus flower, and then I also have some lemon balm. And you can kind of do whatever you've got or use whatever you've got, whatever sounds good. I actually think I'm just going to do the lemon verbena in here. And all I'm gonna do is take my little pestle, I'm gonna kind of crush it up so that it becomes a little powder. And I didn't do this before because I wanted to show you guys that it doesn't have to be you know, super uh, hard to make a fancy rim of your glass. And that's what we're getting at. And it's not necessarily that the glass rim is gonna have these lemon verbena um, leaf chunks in them, but it's gonna infuse the sugar a little bit so that it has some more aromatics and just some kind of pizzazz to it. So basically you've got this little mixture and I'm just gonna dump it, kind of pick out the bigger parts. As you can see, you have a little, little plate here with some sugar. So now if you're really just trying to get, let's say a, a quick mocktail, you're gonna take a glass, this is just a short wine glass, and you're actually gonna roll the rim in that simple syrup and then roll it into your sugar. And you're gonna see a really pretty little festive herb. Yeah. So now you take those ice cubes that you love Nicole, and I'm hoping that this one fits. Yes, we got it. Maybe not this one, hold on. We've got one in here. Okay, there we go. We've got one that fits. Um, and now uh, to like dress it up, I'm gonna put some of the frozen cherries, just like I did with the blueberries. I don't have froze or um, fresh cherries right now. So I'm gonna put just a few thawed frozen cherries in a drink. And then take my soda water. Look at that color. And now you kind of have a nice little participatory mocktail. And yeah. it's obviously the same as like if you're going to get one of the shake and blended ones, but you can still walk around and you can, you know, kind of have this special drink, but all of your anti-cancer, cancer protective nutrients in your, in your cup as well. I think that's a great idea. And I love putting the, the fruit in there, using it from frozen, thawing it. And if you had any leftover, you could definitely add it into yogurt or oatmeal, something like that. Oh, yeah. I've got some here. I'll probably put it in my oats tomorrow morning or a smoothie or something. So and I just have to comment, like when you take the drink, it's not that you necessarily taste the, you know, the lemon leaves in there, mm -hmm. but is amazing it's so refreshing so just I think one of the biggest things is remembering that you know 
it's you're still allowed to have fun with your drinks um, and fun doesn't always equate to alcohol. And I think in our society, it definitely has become synonymous. And so again, we're here to support our patients, encourage them to still have fun, be social, you know, host parties, be together, but let's do it in some ways that also align with our, our health goals. So sure. All right. Our last one. And this one actually might be my favorite. I just saw this um, a colleague of ours um, uh, sent this over to us and I was like, this is so beautiful. So we're gonna use a champagne flute and I made some cranberry juice or cranberry sauce the end of last week. So, you know, it's on its probably last day, but it's gonna be good. I'm gonna put that right in the bottom of my flute. And it's almost like a Bellini, if you've ever seen a Bellini where you have some uh, fruit puree. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to take a couple spoonfuls and just put that right into the bottom of my. That's a great way to use leftovers. Oh, yes. So, probably just maybe like a couple tablespoons worth. And we're going to set this aside because now we've got a big um, <laughs> pop cookie had. I've got some non-alcoholic champagne here. And Nicole, do you have a favorite that you have ever tried or used? I've got the the free right here. It's a sparkling brute. It's an alcohol removed wine. That one does seem like it gets you know really good reviews. Yeah. I think there's a few out there now. And as people get more curious about, you know mocktails and the whole non-alcoholic scene I think we're going to con continue to see more and more so I was gonna I didn't open this before because I wanted to show you guys a little hack in case anyone ever has to open a bottle in like a party or in their kitchen but I usually take a towel and I get it ready to go always keep your finger right over the top here and then you're going to twist the little cage off mm -hmm. and this is where I usually kind of get the cage ready to go. I put my finger right back on. So you cover it. I put it on my knee and then you gently twist, right? pop. So no corks on the ceiling. Nice. <laughs> so yeah, so we've got our, our bubbles going and all we're gonna do here is we're just gonna put it right into here. I believe this recipe is called the um, cranberry fizz. So we're gonna kind of take our, our time, not overdo it and get it to flow. And you could garnish this with pretty much anything here. I mean, we've got mint, we've got rosemary, you know, if you had any herbs that you wanted to put in there, sage might even be good. Um, Sometimes I often do orange with my cranberry. So I was kind of eyeing that orange over there. I know you and I are on the same wavelength, I think. So what I'm actually going to do is just like you see in maybe, you know, some traditional cocktails out there, sometimes you'll see a peel of orange. And so I'm going to show you guys how to peel an orange where um, you just kind of gracefully skim the surface as long as you can. That's what I tell people. Even if it's just a two inches, that's better than no twist. But I like to try and make it all the way back around the orange. So I have a nice, pretty, pretty uh, length here. And you just spin it. You just kind of twist it and roll it up. And then all you'll do is give it a nice squeeze. Again, we want those aromatics, those oils from the orange on the rim. And then you just drop it. That's now you beautiful little cranberry fizz. I think I'm definitely, I'm, I believe I'm going to have some leftover cranberry soon. So I'm definitely going to be making that one. Yes. And def if you can chill the, the uh, non-alcoholic champagne, it's a little bit better. Mine was at room temperature, so it's still delicious, but I think temp like cool would be a lot better. So I'm going to line these guys up. Nicole, did you have anything else you wanted to talk about with like cancer prevention, alcohol? I know we talked how the best recommendation is really to drink as little as we can, right? Yeah, I, I definitely think that is, that is what the research um, 
you know, says, and it's interesting that it's not, it doesn't matter whether it's beer, wine, or distilled liquor. It still has the the alcohol in there, right? And so I, I love that all four of these are ways that we can keep it fun, really enjoy it, but not have to have the added alcohol. Yes. And I hope one of these, you know, appeals to most people out there, you know, no matter the complexity, it's still, you know, something that you can enjoy and, and feel like you are participating in, you know, all the activities that we, we know and love, you know, no matter of where we're at in our, our cancer journey. So. Yes. Thank you so much, Madeline. Yes, thank you, Nicole. And I appreciate, you know, as always spending time with me in the kitchen and can't wait to see you at our next session. Sounds great. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Have a great night.